Give to the World Ministries welcomes you to another teaching by Ralphina Dotson. Ralphina Dotson is well qualified to share the message you're about to hear as she lives the principles she teaches daily. As you listen, we trust this message will encourage you, help you grow and develop into maturity as a believer in the kingdom of God. The word you don't know is the word that cannot help you, and the word that doesn't take root can never bring a harvest. Let this message take root in the ground of your heart as you listen to it over and over and take notes. Receive this message. Receive your harvest. Hi, it's Ralphina. How are you today? I'm praying that you're doing well. I'm praying that you are full of the joy of the Lord. I'm praying that you're uh, not being overwhelmed and discouraged by the social issues we face right this minute <clears throat> for posterity when this is seen. Um, I'm doing this taping right in the middle of this supposed uh, pande pandemonium, this, um, this viral attack on the earth, especially in the, the United States, but more than that, against the kingdom of God, against God's people. So I just wanted to encourage your hearts today to have a different attitude. I realize that there are things that are happening and there are people that seemingly are being affected by it uh, to the degree that they are passing on out of this life. And uh, I just know without a doubt that God sees that and understands that. But I think that we have lost sight on what we are supposed to do. You see, the Bible says that the plagues would not come now our dwelling. He's made promises to us. If you've never read Psalm 91, you need to read it. And you need to make it a personal confession of your faith and the fact that you believe God to be um, not a man that he would lie. But I want you all to get this point. Right now, the people of God, we've got to start looking like the God we serve is the real, true, and living God. We can't be the scaredest people. We can't be the saddest people. We can't be the people who are yelling and complaining. We got to be the people that stand up and look like God didn't lie, that we are all his people, and that he will take care of us. <clears throat> so I want you to turn in your Bibles to uh, Psalm 103. This is just a, 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 a everyday Psalm scripture. The, those of you who read the Bible, this is a scripture you've read. You've read the Psalms 103. You've read Psalm 23. You've read Psalm 91. You've read Psalm 150. Well, let me remind you about it today because I want us to get an attitude that we are his people. There's a scripture that says he, he, is, he, he expects us to occupy till he comes. That means we're supposed to look like we're the people who know that they have read the end of the book and we accept the fact that God has given us the victory. And so we don't have to be concerned about page 27 because that's not the end of the book. We don't have to be concerned about channel 16. That's not the end of the book. We don't have to worry about the facts and the texts and the emails that we're getting about all the horrible things that are happening. That's not the end of the book. Our book is the book of the word of God. And he is the most high God. I know they got a lot of gods. I know they do. But he's the most high. And he's made available to us information that will set us into a place where we can have some rest. We can be at peace to know that our God reigns. <clears throat> Psalm 103. And every now and then when I read this, I'm, I'm re-reminded. I'm just reminded so that's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to remind you today. It says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Every, every line to me has value, has depth, has dimension. Bless the Lord. Bless him. Speak blessings to God. Oh God, we are so grateful to you for your goodness. So grateful. We bless you with our lives, with our commitment, with our faith, our trust. Our hope is in you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. When I first found out I was a, a, a spirit being, I didn't know that. Nobody had ever told me that I was a spirit living in a body. I had a soul. 
I found that out after years of tormenting myself because I buried my mother in the Borough Cemetery in Chicago uh, in the dead of winter with no coat. And for years, I tormented myself and worried myself and um, uh, just accused myself. And, and just I was just overwhelmed with discouragement because I felt like I had been a bad daughter. I buried my mother with no cold, and it was two degrees. And it took me years to find out the truth. And I heard uh, Kenneth Copeland say it on a radio program. You are a spirit, you live in your body, and you have a soul. I thought, what? I said, what? Say, I said, say what? And he said it again. You are a spirit, you live in a body, and you have a soul. And I'm telling you, the light came on in my mind. The light came on. I didn't know that. Nobody had ever said anything to me like that. I never heard that coming from the pulpit. I was in church my whole life. I never heard anything like that. And it occurred to me <clears throat> that after I heard that, that my concern for my mother being out in the cold ground in the cemetery with no cold, that she wasn't out there shivering and freezing to uh, well, to death, she'd already died, but I thought on the, in, in, in her death, she'd be in a miserable state of freezing cold. And when, that, when that, those words penetrated my thinking, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I just live in this body, and I have a soul. Boy, that, that set me free. I thought, oh, my God. So my mother's not out there in the cemetery? My mother's not out there in the cold ground? My mother's not suffering and tormented because I didn't have enough wisdom, foresight to know that she would need a coat where she was going. My mother didn't need a coat where she was going. She was going to be with the Lord. It set me free. You have a you spirit, live in a body, have a soul. Well, the soul part of my being, I didn't understand too much about it. I heard people say, I heard this old song, every time I... Feel the spirit moving in my soul. I will pray. Huh. Every time I feel the spirit. So I thought the spirit was something that came on you. And so that you felt this wonderful way or thankful way or, or sad way or something. I, just, just wrong information. Wrong information. And, and I, 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 I was so sad about the fact that I had spent so long having wrong information. I was the spirit. Not every time I feel the spirit, I was the spirit. And every time I feel the spirit, every time I'm aware that there's something that's happening in a realm that I can't see, feel it moving in my soul. In my soul. I didn't know the difference between the soul and the spirit at that time. And... Uh, I came to Houston, Texas, and I went to Lakewood Church, and Pastor John Osteen said, um, the soul is the, the, the mind, the will, the emotions. Well, really, it wasn't John Osteen. It was in a class I took by Dr. Linda Hartson at those, back in those days, right before the 80s started, 79, something like that, you know. Mind, will, and emotions. I think I must have heard it about 50 times before it occurred to me. And see, sometimes people, I, I'm, I'm awed at how long it takes us to hear what someone is saying to us. We might be listening, but we're not listening. We, we're on, the, on, the, on the, the surface, some kind of way, it just overshadows us or slips by us or goes through us or something, but we don't get it. So here we are now, I'm learning that my spirit and my soul are two different things. And my soul is the mind, will, and emotions. Now, that's really not true. There's many more components of our soul. But those three, if we understand that that's who we are, we, we start to move out of stupidity into a place where we have a different attitude. So here I am. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. My mind, if I get my mind right. Oh, inside your mind is all kind of stuff. Your mind, you know, your memory, your, 
your, your, your person, all those things are in there. Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. So that scripture that says be transformed by the renewing of your mind means God wants you to start to break your mind down so that you know without a doubt in every area of your being because the, the mind and will and the emotions is all right here. It's all in your head. It's all a part of the process of your thinking. And so God wants us to understand that our thinking needs to come to a place where we bless the Lord. So get up in the morning and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I bless you today. I thank you today. I thank you for your goodness to me today. I thank you that you let me see today. I have been pronounced dead twice. And so because I was dead and the people resuscitated me and all that, I have a real, real serious attitude about acknowledging the power and the goodness of God. But you may not have had that problem, but you li if you live in today, oh, all these scary things about where to go and what you can do and how you need to wear a mask and how you can't touch anybody, you don't need to be close, and you know, just all the things the enemy is doing. But he, God wants us to keep our eye on him because he's the source of our supply. He's our protection. He says, uh, bless, uh, I will, I will, be in the secret place of the Most High. I will, I will abide in the secret place of the Most High. So I'm in a place where the plan the enemy had to send to, to destroy me or to uh, impact me, it won't happen where I am. Psalm 103 says, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I pray with people a lot for healing. People call me on the phone. I meet people in different places, in the hospital, all those kind of things where people are dealing with symptoms and signs in their body that's really hard for them to handle. And um, suffering with symptoms, suffering with a, a conditions that they've given a name to, and we're so fearful of a name. I mean, truthfully, the name cancer has killed more people than the actual cancer. The thought of cancer is so devastating and so horrifying that people just throw their hands up and they just let whatever the condition is just take over. And they, they, they give up so fast when they hear that word. Well, I know that cancer is just a name. And so I called when I was praying for people with cancer. I say, well, cancer, you are but a name. But you must bow your knee to the name of Jesus. We rebuke your plan to, to cut this life short. This person will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Now, that's the word of God. I'm not praying my prayer, the Ralphina special. I'm praying what God's word says. It says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Come to a place where you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking is changed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let God have access to your thinking because our thinking is based on what we see and hear and feel and understand our past. And our, but when you don't know when nobody's taught you and you don't have a clue how things are working, you can have your thinking in the kitchen when the trouble is in the hallway. You can have your thinking in the kitchen and the trouble is in the bedroom in the back. So I want, I want to make it clear to you, it's important that we come to a place where our thinking comes to a higher level. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, I know I'm not the only one with testify, testimonies and can testify about how good God has been. He has been good to me. He has salvaged me. He has contained me. He has protected me. He has forgiven me. He has shown me his grace and his mercy. He has been patient with me. He's, he's looked at me and he knows me through and through and he still loves me. And that's the way he feels about you. Don't let where you are, what you did and what you didn't do, don't let those things steal from you the confidence that you need to have that the hand of God opened for you in the past, it will do it again. It says, forget not all his benefits. I have had some benefits because of the Lord, and I'm so grateful because of it. 
I'm so grateful because he said these things and because he made these words available. Use your Bible so that you can encourage yourself. We sitting here worried about whether or not we're going to get to go to the nail shop. Whether we're going to get to go to the theater. Whether we're going to get to go and, and do this or do that. Uh, what we need to be aware of is we need to be concerned with the fact that we have to start to look like the God we serve is real. And the way the world will know he's real because he's real in us. It says, who forgives all your iniquities, the word iniquities. It says, uh, the word says in Isaiah, it said he, he, was, um, he was bruised, he was, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded. Now the word transgression is a word that unless you've you know, been around a long time, you don't hear that word used in sentences. But a trans, uh, the way the cross was made, there's a vertical and there's a horizontal. And so when sin is committed, the sin is between earth or you and God. And uh, the horizontal is between you and someone else. So the transgression is the trans, the, the, the plane that goes across the place where he rested his arms. That tr the transgression is where you stepped out of your space into someone else's space. Either with your mouth or some act you committed or some uh, behavior or some attitude where the people that are across from you have been affected by what you've done. And so our transgressions, the ways we've offended others and injured others and betrayed others and disappointed others and embarrassed others. You know, we don't want to admit it. We want to say, well, you know, that's her problem. Well, the truth is, if you cause something, that's a, that's, a, that's a transgression. And he asked us to forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's in the, that's in the, uh, 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 the Lord's prayer. If we can forgive the people that have done something to us, then we can forgive, we can ask God to forgive us for things we've done to others. It says, for our iniquities. Now, the transgression is the horizontal. The vertical plane is the sin between us and God. But the next verse doesn't talk about transgressions. It talks about iniquities. What is an iniquity? An iniquity is a behavior, a bit kind of thinking, a way of doing things. And it's usually something that we got from the generations before. He was wounded. He was wounded by our transgressions. Let's, let's turn in that scripture place. That's in the book of um, Isaiah, chapter fifty-five. I think that is, and 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 so that you can so that you can see it for yourself, and you can go to it and stand on it, 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 stand on it. Stand on it. Oh, here we are. Is it Isaiah 55 and maybe Isaiah 53? I expect you to cut this part out, Joshua. <laughs> Ooh. Here it is. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Remember, this thing across here, this is a wound, a stab, a cut, a shot. Something that leaves us injured is because of the trans considered a transgression. But here he says, but he was bruised for our iniquities. And I think about the concept of this statement. He says, 
He who forgives all our iniquities. The Bible says that he was bruised for our iniquities. The Bible says that. Now listen. The bruise is a place where there was not necessarily a skin breaking, but it was a, a injury that was applied to a place on our body. And the bruise uh, shows up more tomorrow. I know you've seen people with black eye. Well, they didn't get the black eye just a few minutes ago. They got it a, few, a little while ago. And now a bruise is showing. So it's not something that happened immediately. It's something that's happened in the past, and this is the evidence of it. Well, here we are. We are coming down through generations, and some of the stuff we're dealing with has been stuff that's passed down from a past generation. You know, uh, I, all the people in my cousin's family, every single one of them was a gambling person. They bet on the roaches crawling across the floor, which roach would get to where they were going the fastest. They would bet on everything. That was just something that just seemed like it just came down to the grandfather, the grandmother, the, the, all the people around them. And they, that's all they talked about was how to gamble. How to, how to gamble, and their lives were in terrible turmoil because one of them was always running from somebody he owed money to because he gambled and didn't have the money when it didn't work. So here we are dealing with this generational stuff, bloodline things sent to us by someone in our past life, in the past life of our bloodline. And his, here it says, he forgives all our iniquities. So when I found out that my attitude and my lying or my whoredom or my anger or my whatever it was I was fighting came through my bloodline. It, I, I'm like my daddy. I'm like my aunt. You know, the doctor will ask you, well, let me ask you something. Uh, didn't anybody, did your mother die of high, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes? Why? Because those things are passed down through the blood. And a bruise, and is a, a, the iniquity is a bruise where blood has been burst and the blood vessels now show. So he's forgiven the stuff that's come down to us from long ago. It says, whose heals are all diseases. Who heals all your diseases. So right today. I'm going to pray a prayer right now for you to get healing from God. We can't, we can't walk, walk around complaining about what we're dealing with and people that don't know the Lord see us and wonder, well, where is our God? He's already done this. <clears throat> this is a word from the Lord. This was written by David. Hallelujah. So long ago, thousands of years ago. Here we are with the word that's a promise. Who forgives all our iniquities, who forgives all the sins of our past. The Bible says there are places in the Bible where something is passed down 10 generations. I don't know anybody who knows people from 10 generations. You might know somebody from 10 generations. I don't know anybody that far back. I have no idea what kind of person they were, what they did, said, or thought. But I know that there are things that I've had to fight in my personal life that I knew that wasn't something I wanted, but it was there. And I had to take authority over it and fight it off me and change my thinking. Who heals all my diseases. Now, some of you got issues. Somebody might be fighting a cancer or... And, and fight it. Don't claim it as your cancer. I had a woman say, oh, my cancer. Don't say my cancer. Don't take ownership of blood pressure. Oh, my heart disease. Oh, my allergies. Don't say my. Why would you claim it if you don't want it? The Bible says, speak things that be not as though they were. The Bible says, you have not because you ask not. So we are asking God to honor this word that says he would heal all our diseases. And so here we go. In the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father, and thank you. We come because Jesus is the, is the door, is the validation, is the, 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 the presentation of our credibility, of who we are, what value, 
we are to you and what value you are to us. So we come in his name. Yeshua, we come in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that because you said you would heal all our diseases, we lay before you the plan the enemy has to torment us and infirm us with the sickness, sickness, disease, weakness. We speak to heart disease and we command that heart to be restored, healed in the name of Jesus. Heart come to full fruition of repair in Jesus' name. Blood pressure, blood vessels, I command you now to become elastic and expand so that the pressure on the blood vessels is no longer contained because of the rigidity of the blood vessels. Father, we thank you that the blood vessels will by your spirit dilate so that blood pressure will come down and the fear of stroke and, and blindness and all the things, high blood pressure claims, kidney failure and all that kind of stuff. We break in its power. Blood pressure, you will become normal. Blood vessels, you will dilate and become normal. Father, pancreas, we thank you. The pancreas is now uh, developing the ability to put out the amount of insulin required to bring drug sugars to a normal level. We come against weakness in, and infirmity in the joints. We come against arthritis. We, we break the power of the, 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 the plan of the enemy to beat us down with all kinds of infirmities. Every sickness, you call it out, and you remind it is just a name, and it must bow its knee to the name of Jesus, and you do it with confidence, because this is what it says. He who heals all our diseases, we claim our healing today. We claim it now. We claim it right now in the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. I'll see you later. <laughs>